Following the fall of France in June 1940 and the signing of the Franco-German Armistice, the Third Reich occupied much of France as per the treaty. However, they allowed for the creation of a French rump state in southern France, with its de facto capital located in the small spa town of Vichy, although Paris would remain the de jure capital. The official name of this rump state was the French state, although today it is more commonly referred to as Vichy France. The Vichy regime was controlled by Philippe Vuitton, a former field marshal during the First World War and a hero of Verdun. He was granted full and extraordinary powers which Pétain used to rewrite the constitution, officially ending the Third French Republic. Although being classed as a client state of Germany, Vichy France in reality had much autonomy. This included in their foreign relations with both the Axis and Allied nations. The Vichy regime was recognised by the majority of the Axis alliance as the legitimate government of France and contrary to popular belief, the Vichy regime's relations with the Axis were officially neutral, meaning that they never joined the Axis alliance during World War II. The Vichy government instead adopted a policy of armed neutrality, where they would remain neutral in the Second World War but protect itself and its colonies in any way deemed necessary, including military action. The most notable action of this policy against the Axis came in November 1942 when a French fleet stationed at the port of Toulon was scuttled in order to prevent it being seized and used by the Axis. This was a result of the Axis occupation of the country, following the Allied landings in North Africa as part of Operation Torch. Germany wanted Vichy France to take a more active role in the war, wishing them to officially join on the side of the Axis. In an attempt to achieve this, Adolf Hitler, met with the Deputy Prime Minister of Vichy France, Pierre Laval, in the German-occupied city of Montois on the 22nd of October 1940. However, Hitler never managed to achieve this goal and Vichy France remained neutral in the war. On the other side of the world, the fall of France in June 1940 left French control of Indochina in a tenuous position. Seizing on this opportunity, the Empire of Japan invaded French Indochina on the 22nd of September 1940. The fighting lasted from the 22nd to the 26th of September and ended in the Vichy government allowing the Japanese to set up military bases in French Indochina and to occupy the north. Japan's objective was to prevent China, who they had been at war with since 1937, from importing arms and fuel through French Indochina. The relations between the French state and the Allies were a bit more complicated. As part of the Franco-German armistice, Vichy France maintained control of the French Navy, although under strict conditions. The idea that the powerful French Navy could potentially fall into the hands of Germany and aid them in an invasion of the British Isles caused great concern for the British government. This resulted in Britain demanding the French state turn their ships docked in North Africa over to the British Navy or sail them to the Americas where they could be disarmed by the US. Pétain refused the British demands and French Admiral Marshal Jean Soul insisted that he would never let his ships fall into German hands. However, in July 1940, the British attacked the French fleet docked in the North African port of Mers el Kabir. The British Admiral in charge of this operation, Sir James Somerville, was in the words of Winston Churchill charged with one of the most disagreeable tasks a British Admiral has ever been faced with. Following this attack on their fleet, the Vichy government cut all ties to Britain and in accordance with their policy of armed neutrality, conducted limited air raids against the British territory of Gibraltar. This attack by a recently allied nation just a mere two weeks ago led to an increase in anti-British feelings within Vichy France. Both the USA and USSR both granted full diplomatic recognition to the French state. However, the USSR cut all ties in June 1941, following the launching of Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union by the Axis. The USA, on the other hand, maintained full diplomatic relations with Vichy France until the Axis fully occupied them in 1942. 
The US hoped to use their influence to encourage Vichy France to oppose military collaboration with Germany. US President Theodore Roosevelt actually preferred to work with Vichy France than with Charles de Gaulle, who led the Free French, as he thought Charles de Gaulle as, quote, the dictator's apprentice. Interestingly, the Vichy French government continued to recognise Chiang Kai-shek's government based in the city of Chongqing as the legitimate government of China, despite continual pressure from Japan and the Axis to recognise the Japanese puppet reorganised national government of China on the Wang Jingwei. At this time, the Vichy regime was not the only group claiming to be the legitimate French government. The Free French, led by former French Minister of Defence, Charles de Gaulle, claimed to be the true French government in exile. However, in Vichy France, many saw de Gaulle as nothing more than the British puppet and a traitor. This feeling changed, however, as the war progressed and turned more against the Axis, with the Free French gaining more and more support from former Vichy colonies and supporters. In relation to the French colonial empire, while a few French colonies in Africa went over to the Free French immediately following the creation of Vichy France, many stayed loyal to the new French state. As the war progressed though, many would peacefully switch sides to the Free French and Allied cause. Despite Vichy France's official policy of neutrality during the Second World War, there were several conflicts with Britain and the Free French in their colonial holdings. The first of these conflicts took place at the Battle of Dakar. This holding was part of the West Africa campaign, which remained loyal to the Vichy regime. The port of Dakar was far superior to the British port of Freetown in modern day Sierra Leone. Furthermore, the gold reserves of the Banque de France and the Polish government in exile were stored there. The operation, codenamed Menace, was a failure. The British and Free French forces had expected the Vichy forces to peacefully switch sides. Instead, they put up a stiff resistance and managed to repel the attack. Hitler was so impressed by the Vichy resistance at Dakar, he allowed an increase of the Vichy army limit. The next but successful clash came with a free French campaign in Equatorial Africa, which, with the exception of French Gambon, peacefully switched sides. The Battle of Gambon saw free French and Vichy forces fighting each other face to face for the first such time of the war. In June 1941, the British and Free French forces began Operation Exporter, the invasion of Vichy, Syria and Lebanon. This offensive had the goal of preventing the Axis from using Vichy air bases in the region to attack Egypt. The invasion lasted five weeks and ended in the occupation of Beirut and the armistice of St. John de Arc. The British had originally had misgivings about allowing the Free French to participate in this invasion knowing that the Vichy supporters viewed them as traitors. Nonetheless, Charles de Gaulle insisted, and so Free French troops took part. However, this encouraged the Vichy forces to put up a stiffer resistance than expected, and the Vichy forces being repatriated to the mainland, only 5,668 forces defected to the Free French, with 17,563 forces being repatriated back to Vichy France. Following the Italian defeat in the East Africa campaign, the Vichy loyal colony of French Somaliland was invaded by the British and so changed sides to the Free French and Allies by the end of 1942. In the Far East colony of French Indochina, the acquiescence of the Vichy government to Japanese demands prompted Thailand to invade to claim lost territory in Laos and Cambodia lost to France in the early 20th century. This began the short Franco-Thai War, which lasted from October 1940 to May 1941, and ended with the Vichy government ceding Indochina territory to Thailand through a negotiated peace by the Japanese. The end of the Vichy government's autonomy came following the Allied landings in Vichy-controlled North Africa in November 1942 as part of Operation Torch. This prompted the Axis to occupy the rest of the country 
and led to the Vichy government becoming nothing more than a puppet government to the Axis. And by late 1944, the Vichy France government officially ceased to exist with the Allied liberation of France.